morning. <clears throat> Today after service, we're going to do something a little different than what we've done all summer, I guess. We're going to have a birthday cake and coffee and juice in the gathering hall. So be sure and stop in. At the birthday cake is in honor of everyone who had a July birthday. And whether you had a July birthday or didn't have a July birthday, be sure and stop in and have a piece of cake. We have one special member, Carl, who is only 90, was only 97 on his birthday a couple days ago. I called him that morning and I said, uh, happy birthday, Carl, how you doing? He said, well, this is my birthday and I'm 97 today and I'm heading for 100. So what great attitude. Uh, we welcome and thank Pastor Bigner for leading us in worship today. Pastor Steve is in New Orleans planning for the youth convention with a few other members. So thank you, Pastor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. In your name, we, by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds he prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. Just to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse nor is his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Sophie.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up David, a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians 2, 11 through 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant's promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down his flesh, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. Um, and then I reconciles both to God in one body through the cross, therefore by killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we were both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saint and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told them all they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. 
and they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And of those, and those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'd like you to stay standing for the reading of the sermon text from the epistle, Ephesians chapter 2. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. 
built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. May be seated. I'd like to just make a brief comment about the epistle lesson, the gospel lesson. Jesus was the agent by which all things in heaven and on earth were created and set in place. And it should not be surprising for us who believe that he was really God and fully man that in his humanity, he could step aside and say, okay, son of God, take charge and multiply the resources with a word, and he did. The poor disciples counted their money bag and had just barely enough for themselves and nobody else. And here they had Jesus in their midst. Having said that, we get into the text for the day, which is the one I read to you. When you and I were born, we were sent out, launched. Either we're gonna come down safely with Jesus or we're gonna go and crash away from him. We all need Jesus and his help to, to get down safely. That's true for all of us, not just the people sitting here in Zion Church, but all the folks outside, all your friends, all your neighbors, all your relatives, they all need Jesus or they're gonna crash in a disaster. There was a couple who was in a private plane and they re were returning home to Houston, Texas. She had not flown hardly at all. And here it was, evening coming on. And she said, oh honey, look at the lights of the streets. And the signs, it's like jewels and diamonds against black velvet. And shortly after that, she heard a uh, Her husband gasped, the eyes rolled back in his head, and he had suffered a major heart attack. Now, she didn't know anything about flying, but she knew she could steer away from the city which they were approaching, and not take too many people out when they crashed. And desperately, she remembered the five children that they had still at home that she had to help raise. So on the radio, she began turning from station to station, help, help, maybe, SOS. And down on the ground, they heard her interrupted calls for help. They cleared all 16 channels for a couple of seconds and told her, get on this one channel and we will teach you how to fly the plane and how to get down safely. And there she was learning to fly the plane. And she made her first pass to come around and land, but she was going a little too far one way and would have landed in a big department store and the shopping center. So she made another loop around and this time she was too far the other way and would have landed on the interstate highway. A third attempt at trying to land 
and she came in a little too fast and a little too steep, and her plane hit the ground, bounced, hit the ground again, and bounced, and rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled, and came to a stop with four feet of runway still left. The ambulance got her husband to the hospital. He recovered, and that was quite an air rescue over Houston, Texas. Now, why am I saying that? Except to, re to remember that you and I need to get down too. That's why Jesus came. When you and I were born, we were launched and there is no turning back. We are flying either with Jesus and safely with him, trusting his forgiveness and believing his promises, or we're heading for a crash in defiance of Jesus. We believe those two choices and only those two. So where are we? I have to believe it that God's Holy Spirit is the one who calls and gathers the whole Christian church on earth. And if I am going to be saved, it is not Paul Robert who is going to do it. It is the blessed Holy Spirit using the means of grace. Any of you, you can't trust yourself and say, oh, look at my background. Look at my family. Look at the pious life I live. Look at the good citizen I am. Look at all the things I've done for, or forget it. It doesn't count. Only Jesus is the one who brings us down safely, alone. So that's where we have to be, trusting him. We'd be lost without him. He lived for you and he lived for me. His perfect obedience is in place of our ragged obedience. He stooped under the load of blame and guilt and carried it all the way. He carried all your load and all my load, all of humanity's load, and he went to the cross with it and paid the price that would give us freedom and forgiveness if we trust him. So we repent and we count on him and we believe on him because he is the one who is our savior. Our best deeds and activities all fall way short because of selfishness and ego and our own sin. His ragged, his perfect obedience covers our ragged obedience. His sacrifice was enough and God raised him from the dead. Now he's the place where God can be the king in your life, starting trusting Jesus and trusting him day by day, trusting him from the top of the head and from the bottom of the heart. Those are the elect. One of the things that I had the joy of doing toward the end of my pastoral career was to be the mission executive for this church district. We not only started new churches and, and a couple of new ministries, but I spent a lot of those 11 years visiting pastors and sitting down with them saying, how can I help you? Is there anything I can get for you? Do you need a book? Do you need some guidance? Do you need a workshop in your congregation? We offered it to anybody and everybody who would come. And it was a joy, a great joy. What often happens in a congregation is that congregations settle in. 
they say, we got to find a pastor. We get a pastor. We got to pay for our pastor. We got to support our pastor. And following him, uh, they do that and they raise their budget and they get the money and they do what they need to do. The trouble is if they don't think any bigger, they're kind of marking time. They are not where they ought to be. They're just into maintenance and service of themselves. We need to grow in the word. I remember talking to one pastor. He's no longer in this church district, but he was served a two-point parish over near Detroit Lakes, a village church and then an open country church. And I noticed that the village church was doing rather exceptionally well. So I went to, to him and I said, Ken, tell me about what you're doing. And he said, Paul, I preached a short series of sermons on the Apostles' Creed. And then I told them, that's what we all believe and that's what you believe. And then he handed out a three by five card to every person who was in church that day. He said, I want you to put down the name of somebody that you know who doesn't go to church. Write the name down, put it down right now. And then between May and December, I want you to do something three or four times with that person socially. Go fishing with him, go hunting with him, help him with his garden, admire his flowers, whatever. Enjoy his company three or four times. And once you get a little hope, a glimmer of friendship, invite him to our church twice. So what happened? A 12-year-old wrote down the name of his grandfather. Grandpa didn't go to church. And then he helped Grandpa with the garden, and they went fishing together a couple of times, and that lad said to Grandpa, Grandpa, if I promised to sit with you, would you go to church with me? Grandpa was no longer an inactive. There was a married couple. Another married couple moved into the neighborhood. They went together, they played cards together, they played board games together, they had supper together, and they came to church together. They were on church before. So what I'm saying is it's important that we share with our friends. That's how the kingdom of God gets extended. We need the TV campaigns, but the basic word is done by followers. That's the wonderful thing about the scriptures. What was true for the apostles is also true for us. The same book that they used is there for us. And it is there to be shared. 
Down in Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, there is a law, large cavern underground called Methodist Church because days before, years before, just as the park was being established, a little Methodist church sat up there. And the park service would take people down and turn off the lights. The darkness was so thick, you could not feel your hand one inch away or see anything. And then the woman who was the guide lit a match and lighted a candle. And oh, how it dispelled the darkness. How wonderful. The church is to hold up the light of Christ. The church exists by mission just as fire exists by burning. And the light that shines brightly when we give to district and synod can also shine brightly in the places where we live. It is for everybody that our Savior lived and died. And so we hold up the light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the compassion shown in Christ Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep and the righteous son of David, that at all times we may trust in God's right hand in whom true satisfaction is found, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for pious and faithful shepherds to watch over the flock of God, that his sheep would fear no more and at last be gathered into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who hunger and are in need, that God would fill us with his compassion and provide us with a means to care for our neighbor and so share with them the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for good government and faithful rulers, for our President Biden and our Governor Waltz, and for a pervading trust in God from whom all provision comes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for our Father's constant care and support for the body and life, and that he would attend in mercy to all those who are in need among us, freeing us from dismay and fear by the certainty that Christ is their righteousness. And we pray especially for Kathy, Barb, Tim, Pat, Andrea, Derek, Jeanette, Rosie, Nicole, Mike, Valletta, Jackie, Julie, Shirley, Eileen, Rebecca, Opal, CJ, Candy and family, and Caleb. And we also remembered with thanksgiving those who celebrate anniversaries, Paul and Jeanette, Don and Barb, Bob and Jeannie, Jason and Amanda, Bob and Karen, Corin and Melody. So we pray, dear Father, that you would bless us all in our daily lives and give us your love and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all of those who today receive Christ's body and blood for the assurance of the forgiveness of sins and that our faith may be strengthened as we meet him at this table and that we may greet him always as the Lord our Savior and our righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks to you, O Lord, that you have made us fellow citizens with the saints in light. Keep us in the true faith for as long as you preserve us in this world, that we may hopefully and eagerly await the day when we stand in your presence with them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We gather the offering.
We invite you to stand as you're able for the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly that we should, that it was truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For your sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take.
We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.